Three Chinese astronauts might be stuck in space for a while. Their return to Earth has been delayed to an unspecified date after their spacecraft was reportedly hit by a small piece of debris, according to Chinese state media. So what's really going on? And are those Taikonauts going to be okay? Back in April 2025, China launched its Shenzhou-20 mission, sending three astronauts to the Tiangong space station. Fast forward a few months, and their replacements, aboard Shenzhou-21, docked with Tiangong on a Friday, briefly bringing the station's crew count up to six. After a few days of working together, the two crews held a handover ceremony early Tuesday, officially transferring command of the outpost to the new team. Everything seemed to be going smoothly. Once in orbit, Shenzhou-21 successfully docked with the forward port of the Tianhe core module at 3.22 a.m. Beijing time on November 1, 2025. The entire docking took just about three and a half hours, setting a new record for the fastest docking of a Shenzhou spacecraft with the station. After completing the autonomous rendezvous and docking, the Shenzhou-21 astronauts entered the station through the orbital module. At 4.58 a.m., the Shenzhou-20 crew, already living and working in orbit, opened what they call their home door to warmly welcome their replacements aboard. And honestly, it was such a cheerful moment. In one clip, you can even see a Chinese astronaut, or Taikonaut, using a brand new space oven, delivered by the Shenzhou-21 team to cook chicken and ribs. All six astronauts gave it a thumbs up, grinning from ear to ear. I mean, who would have thought the Tiangong station had not just a space oven, but even a space microwave. It really challenges all those old stereotypes about bland astronaut food. The Chinese definitely know how to make space living look good. But unfortunately, what started as a lighthearted, upbeat scene has taken a worrying turn. The Shenzhou-20 spacecraft, the very vehicle the outgoing crew was supposed to use to return to Earth, has apparently suffered damage from space debris. According to a statement from the China Manned Space Agency, CMSA, the Shenzhou-20 crewed spacecraft is suspected to have been struck by a small piece of orbital debris, and assessment of the impact and associated risks is currently underway. To ensure the health and safety of the astronauts and the successful completion of the mission, it has been decided that the originally planned return of Shenzhou-20 on November 5th will be postponed. The agency hasn't said exactly when the impact might have occurred, only that there were no signs of trouble earlier in the week. The recent incident is another reminder of just how big a problem space junk has become, especially for astronauts spending long stretches of time up there. All kinds of stuff are whizzing around Earth's orbit these days. Bits of old rockets, dead satellites, even tiny micrometeoroids. They might seem harmless, but when they're zipping through space at crazy speeds, even the smallest fragment can cause serious trouble. To put that into perspective, a piece of debris just one centimeter wide can hit with the force of a hand grenade when traveling around 10,500 miles per hour. And remember, the Tiangong space station, like the ISS, orbits at over 17,000 miles per hour. At those speeds, there's no such thing as a minor collision. So even though you can't see them, these invisible threats are very real. Thankfully, no human lives have been lost to space debris yet, but there have already been some close calls. Take the Canadarm2 on the International Space Station, for example. It was punctured by a tiny piece of debris in 2021. And it's not just small stuff causing concern. The upper layers of low Earth orbit are cluttered with old rocket stages that both the US and the former Soviet Union left behind decades ago. Neither side ever agreed on how to clean it all up, which means those relics are still drifting out there. In fact, in June 2022, two of those abandoned upper stages, one Soviet, one American, passed within about 500 feet of each other. That near miss shows just how much the past is still floating around above us. Scientists are working on ways to tackle the growing cloud of junk around our planet, from capture nets to lasers to space tugs, but so far, progress has been slow. For now, it's a waiting game between innovation and an increasingly crowded orbit. At this point, we don't really know how serious the damage is. What does seem likely, though, is that it could delay the Shenzhou-20 crew's return home. They've already been aboard the station for over six months, so the situation's understandably tense. If the damage turns out to be too severe, the plan would be for the Shenzhou-20 crew to return to Earth using the Shenzhou-21 spacecraft, which only recently docked with the station. That, however, would leave the Shenzhou-21 crew temporarily stranded in orbit until China can send up another spacecraft to bring them home. 
The real danger comes if something else goes wrong in the meantime, say, another piece of debris hits the station, causing a decompression or some other emergency. In that case, the Taikonauts would have nowhere safe to evacuate. Their only option would be to board the damaged spacecraft and attempt re-entry, hoping it stays intact long enough to get them home. Thankfully, the odds of that happening are quite low, and it's safe to assume China has a contingency plan ready. Still, it's worth understanding what that emergency return might actually look like. The Shenzhou spacecraft is made up of three parts. The orbital module, where the crew lives, the re-entry capsule, which brings them home, and the service module, which handles power and propulsion. Before re-entry, these modules separate. The re-entry capsule continues toward Earth while the other two burn up in the atmosphere. Landings are usually timed for early morning or late evening, so that the descending capsule catches sunlight against the dark sky, making it easier for ground stations to visually track it. Here's how the re-entry sequence unfolds. Re-entries are usually timed for dawn or dusk, so that the capsule catches sunlight against the dark sky, making it easier for ground crews to spot and track it. The process begins with a thruster burn that turns the spacecraft 90 degrees to release the orbital module, which then breaks apart in the upper atmosphere. The spacecraft then rotates another 90 degrees, positioning itself so that its engines face forward, and fires its main thrusters for about two minutes. This burn slows it by roughly 100 meters per second, just enough to let it drop into its re-entry path. At about 10,000 meters altitude, the 3.2-ton re-entry capsule starts deploying its parachutes. A series of pilot chutes and a drogue chute slow it down from roughly 180 meters per second to 80 meters per second. Around 8,000 meters, the main parachute opens, and if the capsule descends too quickly, faster than expected between 6,000 and 5,000 meters, a backup chute automatically deploys. Once the capsule reaches about 6,000 meters, the 280-kilogram heat shield drops away, and a radio beacon activates to help rescuers track the capsule's descent. The parachute system adjusts the capsule's angle to reduce heat, then shifts it upright for a smooth, vertical landing at about 10 meters per second. Roughly 20 seconds after the heat shield is jettisoned, the astronauts' seats lift into position to cushion them for touchdown. According to an official document from China's space agency, the country has been steadily improving its emergency response plans to handle risks like potential leaks caused by space debris. The report notes that astronauts now have five times more time to respond to emergencies than they did during the station's early operations, a major boost to crew safety. In the most extreme situations, Taikonauts could either return early aboard a docked spacecraft or be rescued by a standby emergency craft launched from Earth. Popular aerospace commentator Yu Jun, known online as Steed's Scarf, explained that if the current spacecraft is deemed too risky to use, authorities would switch to Plan B. That would mean deploying a backup ship waiting on the ground, likely Shenzhou-22, along with its Long March 2F rocket. Together, they serve as China's rolling backup system, standing by in emergency duty mode ready to bring the astronauts home safely if the situation calls for it. So clearly, China's got plans in place for situations like this. And honestly, judging by those clips of the crew enjoying wings and ribs up there, being stuck on the Tiangong station for a little while longer might not be the worst thing in the world. Incidents like this are exactly why China has been ramping up efforts to develop space debris removal technology. At the International Astronautical Congress in Sydney, CNSA Vice Administrator Bian Ji Gang announced that China is working on active debris removal capabilities to help tackle the growing threat of orbital clutter. While the main goal is to improve orbital sustainability, especially with China's rapidly expanding satellite networks, experts note that the same technology could, in theory, also be used to target or disable adversary satellites. That dual-use potential has drawn some international attention and speculation. China has already demonstrated some of these advanced capabilities. Its Shijian-21 satellite, launched in October 2021, carried out a series of sophisticated operations in geostationary orbit, including close approaches, docking maneuvers, and possibly even orbital refueling. The details remain tightly classified, but the mission showed just how capable China has become in handling complex, high-precision orbital maneuvers. More recently, the Shijian-25 satellite has reportedly conducted similar tests, pushing those technologies even further. 
All of this reflects China's fast-growing presence in space. The country now has an operational space station, a steadily increasing launch rate, and ambitious plans to deploy massive satellite constellations numbering in the thousands. At the same time, the China National Space Administration says its commitment to debris mitigation is meant to address mounting concerns about orbital congestion, an issue that's becoming more urgent every year. Still, unlike Western debris removal projects, such as the European Space Agency's Clear Space One or Remove Debris Missions, China's approach remains largely behind closed doors. There's little public information about the specific technologies, timelines, or methods being developed, which naturally raises questions about how purely civilian these efforts really are. Technically speaking, active debris removal is no small feat. It requires extremely precise orbital maneuvering, reliable target acquisition, and safe disposal methods that don't risk creating even more debris. In practice, that usually means capturing a piece of junk, whether with a robotic arm, net, or other device, and guiding it into a controlled re-entry so that both the debris and the removal craft burn up harmlessly in Earth's atmosphere. Recent tracking data even suggests that Shijian-21 made significant orbital changes after its presumed refueling, possibly positioning itself for more debris removal demonstrations, or perhaps for other missions that remain undisclosed. The push to develop active debris removal technology sits in a bit of a gray area. It's a crucial innovation for keeping Earth's orbit clean, but it's also what experts call a dual-use capability, one that could serve peaceful purposes or military ones. After all, any system designed to approach, capture, and move satellites could just as easily be used to disable or remove another nation's spacecraft. That's why defense analysts are watching closely raising concerns about the potential for these tools to become weapons in orbit. China's rapidly advancing space program is unfolding alongside a broader global trend, the growing militarization of space. As satellites become vital for communication, navigation, and intelligence gathering, countries are increasingly focused on protecting their assets and, if necessary, denying those same capabilities to rivals.